If you're watching this video, you're probably interested in buying an Apple laptop. Congratulations, a laptop is a big purchase, so it's very important that you choose the right one. And with Apple, it can be confusing because there's probably a ton of different configurations that you can make when purchasing a MacBook. Well, in this video, I'm gonna put your mind at ease and I'm gonna break down each MacBook model and explain which MacBook model is perfect for which type of user. So by the end of this video, you should be able to choose the one that's perfect for you. So going into 2018, there are currently three models of MacBooks. You have the MacBook, the MacBook Air, and the MacBook Pro, and all MacBook models come standard with at least eight gigabytes of RAM, and all of them have solid state drives inside. So you're gonna get pretty fast performance when it comes to hard drive speed, since there really is no hard drive, it's all flash storage with the solid state drives, and they all have at least eight gigabytes of RAM, which is nice. So let's start off with the regular MacBook. This is Apple's 12 inch screen laptop. The base model starts at $1,299 and it's the only MacBook that's available in four different colors, rose gold, space gray, gold, and silver. So if you meet any of these following conditions, you should probably consider getting the MacBook. First, if you care about looks more than performance, I said this in my previous Mac Laptop Buyer's Guide video. The MacBook is just one of the sexiest laptops. However, it's not the best performing laptops by any means. Uh, it's got that mobile processor in the base model, so you're not gonna get high performance uh, compared to the other MacBook models, but it does come in those four different colors, so if you're all about the looks more than the performance, consider getting the MacBook. If you want something that's ultra portable and super mobile, if you're always on the go, get the MacBook. This is Apple's thinnest and smallest laptop currently that they have right now. So if you want something that's very small and easy to tote around and put in a bag and get out and, and take anywhere you go, the MacBook is great for that. If you want the smallest screen out of any Apple laptop, this is the 12 inch screen. And this is the smallest screen that is offered by Apple for their whole entire MacBook line. Uh, this screen is gorgeous though. It's got 226 pixels per inch. So it's got an amazing retina display on it and it looks very good. But if you want the smallest screen, for some reason, if you just want the smallest screen that's available, the MacBook has it. If you only run basic applications like you know, web browsing, email, uh, maybe Word documents, stuff like that. If you're not doing anything too crazy, uh, CPU intensive, then the MacBook will be able to handle those basic tasks because like I said, the base model only comes with that mobile processor. So that mobile processor is not built to do a lot of heavy tasks. If you don't need a lot of ports, the MacBook only has one single port for input and output and that's the USB-C port. And that's also used for charging too. So if you don't have any adapters and you wanna charge your MacBook, you can't plug anything into it while it's charging because it only has one port, which is kind of weird. But if you're okay with that, the MacBook will be fine. And also last but not least, if you don't mind having a crappy webcam, this, this webcam on the MacBook is still 480p. It's not even standard HD 720p. So uh, I'm not sure why Apple has not changed that yet, but if you don't mind having a crappy webcam built into the laptop, uh, the MacBook has that crappy webcam for you. Now let's move on to the MacBook Air. The base MacBook Air model starts at $999. It has a 13.3 inch screen. If you meet any of these following conditions, you should probably consider getting the MacBook Air. First, if you have the lowest budget. So this is Apple's cheapest laptop that they currently offer at $999. So if you have a strict $1,000 budget, you're pretty much forced to get the MacBook Air. If you care about battery life more than anything else on the laptop, so if you put battery life over performance, speed, screen, display, all that stuff, if you care about battery life over anything, get the MacBook Air. It has the longest battery life over any Apple laptop. It's supposed to get around 12 hours on a single use, on an average day of use. If you want a small and compact laptop similar to the MacBook, but you still want access to legacy ports that the MacBook doesn't offer, get the MacBook Air because the MacBook Air still has ports like the MagSafe connector, uh, a regular USB-A port, uh, SD card slot. So that the MacBook Air has all that when the MacBook just has that one USB-C port for you to use. So if you, if you want a bunch of ports, but still want that small laptop, get the MacBook Air. If you don't mind having a mediocre at best display, then get the MacBook Air. The MacBook Air has the worst display specs out of any Apple laptop right now. Uh, it's a 1440 by 900 resolution screen, so it's not even full HD resolution. It's not an IPS retina display like the others. So if you don't care about having that kind of crappy display, the MacBook Air will be fine. Also, if you don't mind having those silver bezels around the display, uh, the MacBook Air is kind of the only one that has that. And they're kind of big relative to the size of the MacBook Air. So if you don't mind that, that's fine. 
if you plan to mostly run basic applications, sort of like with the MacBook, uh, the MacBook Air isn't built to uh, handle a bunch of hardcore applications and programs that require a lot of power and performance. Also, if you know for sure that you won't need more than eight gigabytes of RAM since the MacBook Air is the only current Apple laptop that's limited to eight gigabytes of RAM. If you need an HD webcam on your laptop, but you still want that small compact size, get the MacBook Air. The MacBook Air has a 720p HD webcam compared to the MacBook, which only has that 480p webcam, which isn't even HD. So if you want that better webcam, go with the MacBook Air. If you don't need a ton of storage space on the laptop itself, the base model MacBook Air only comes with 128 gigabytes of solid state drive storage, which is not that much. Uh, but if you have, if you store a lot of your files if on, on the cloud or on external drives, if you do that already, or if you're okay with doing that, then it will be fine. You can get that base model with 128 gigabytes and just, and you'll have to utilize cloud storage or external hard drives and USB thumb drives and flash drives and things like that to store all your files because you don't want to fill up your MacBook Air that quickly. Now let's talk about the last MacBook model because it's a special model because it comes in a ton of different configurations. So the MacBook Pro comes in two different colors, silver or space gray, and two different screen sizes, 13.3 inches starting at $1,299 for the non-touch bar and $1,799 with the touch bar. The 15.4 inch MacBook Pro starts at $1,999. That's for the 2015 non-touch bar model. And the 15.4 inch touch bar model starts at $2,399. First, let's quickly go over who should get the 2015 MacBook Pro model, the one without the touch bar. First, if you just want an awesome laptop for under $2,000, some people say that the 2015 Retina MacBook Pro 15 inch non-touch bar model is one of the best laptops ever made. So if you want an awesome laptop, right at that $2,000 mark, get this laptop. Uh, also, if you want that MagSafe connector, the one that they, got, that they did away with that everybody loves, if you constantly trip over your cord while your laptop's charging, you want that MagSafe connector, then get this model because it's the only MacBook Pro model left with that MagSafe connector. Also, if you want the wide variety of ports that Apple took away from their newer MacBook Pro models, get the 2015 model because the 2015 model still has HDMI, SD card slot, uh, USB-A, Thunderbolt 2. So instead of just going all to USB-C, which is on the newer MacBook Pros, the 2015 model still has those ports. Also, if you're okay with having an older processor in your laptop, these 2015 MacBook Pros don't have the latest and greatest Intel processors, but they're still powerful and they're still fast. And last but not least, if you want a 15 inch laptop, Apple laptop without the touch bar, this is your only option. Now, if you meet any of these following conditions, you should consider getting one of the newer MacBook Pros. The first most obvious reason is if you want the best performance out of any Apple laptop, the MacBook Pro, as the name suggests, it's a pro model. It's built for professionals. These are the highest performing Apple laptops. So if you want the best specs, you want the highest performance, the fastest speed, you gotta go with the MacBook Pro. If you need the most storage space on a laptop, you gotta go with the MacBook Pro because the 15 inch can be configured up to two terabytes of solid state drive internal storage, which is the most out of any Apple laptop. If you want the best and brightest display out of any Apple laptop, go with the MacBook Pro. The new 13 inch and the new 15 inch MacBook Pros have 25% more color than sRGB, which is on the 2015 MacBook Pro. Uh, and they also have 500 nits of brightness, which is brighter than the 2015 MacBook Pro as well. So they're, the, the newest MacBook Pros have the best displays out of all Apple laptops. And interestingly enough, the 13 inch MacBook Pro has the most pixels per inch. If you run CPU intensive applications, so if you're uh, a gamer, if you're editing HD videos or editing 4K videos, uh, or if you're doing any type of hardcore Photoshop or AutoCAD or any of those applications like that, the MacBook Pro will handle that the best. Now, even though I can edit 4K footage on my 13 inch MacBook Pro, for the best graphics performance, you wanna get the 15 inch MacBook Pro because it's the only one with the dedicated Radon Pro GPU with up to four gigabytes of memory. If you don't mind having a slightly bigger, slightly heavier laptop, go with the MacBook Pro because you're gonna get better performance uh, in a slightly bigger package compared to the MacBook and the MacBook Air. Even though the 13 inch MacBook Pro is still pretty compact and pretty small for what you get. If you absolutely want the touch bar and touch ID features, you gotta go with the MacBook Pro because that's the only model that offer those features. 
Now, even though there is the 13 inch MacBook Pro that doesn't have the touch bar, if you want it, you gotta go with the MacBook Pro. Now, I own the 13 inch touch bar model of the MacBook Pro, and honestly, it's overrated. The touch bar is overrated. The one thing I do love is Touch ID. Uh, I'm a big fan of Touch ID on my iPhone, so it's great to just put my fingerprint down there whenever I need to enter my password. Also, if you're okay with having all USB-C ports, uh, because the newer MacBook Pro models, that's all they come with. Uh, but these little adapters, they're very cheap on Amazon and they will solve that problem for you. If you have a bunch of legacy USB devices, you can get these adapters for a few bucks on Amazon. And last but not least, if you have a very high budget, uh, I think the, the most expensive configuration of the 15 inch MacBook Pro can be over $4,000. So if you have a fairly large budget and you are willing to spend it on a laptop, then yes, go with the MacBook Pro because you're gonna get great performance and you get what you pay for. So that wraps up my 2018 Mac Laptop Buyer's Guide. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Leave me a comment down below. Let me know which laptop you are going to get and let me know if you have a question and I will try my best to get back to you. Thank you for watching. My name is Andy. I'll talk to you in the next one.